on our years of playing, you know, we became an international brand. You know, we became on the international stage and, you know, even to this day, you know, I, I traveled over to Tokyo and I saw a guy with a Hornet starter jacket on, believe it or not. And it blew my mind. You know, I was kind of baffled. I'm like, wow, he got a starter jacket. And that's something that kind of, you know, those colors resonated with a lot of folks around the world. Alexander Julian deserves so much credit for coming up with a look that could look appropriate and athletic and masculine, but also stylish and different. And for whatever reason, te teal and purple at the time were very different from most people's color schemes and it caught on. I had, I had absolutely no clue that it would be the hit that it was. There were rumors that we uh, equaled or even topped the Bulls uh, back in the day because of the popularity of, of the uniforms and the colors. And uh, I remember George telling me a couple of years into this that he said, Alec, I just got back from China, and there was a young man on an airplane in China wearing a hornet's hat. And I got an interpreter to go over and, I, and, and, and ask him, I said, so you like the hornets? He said, no, I like the colors of your hat. <laughs> you know what, it didn't surprise me. I mean, because people just related to it. You know, it was the colors are, you know, they're soft colors, and uh, it just got sort of a, a calmness to it. And you know that you know people always welcome calm, and so I, I think that's why I was able to uh, be as attractive as it was. I think there's a couple of things. I think that the uh, Alexander Julian came up with some amazing colors for the time, and I think that that along with our mascot and the mascot and logo being incorporated in most of our merchandise really was unique for that time period. And it just became a fad to have it. You know, as time emerged and, you know, Larry Johnson, Alonzo Mourning, uh, Muggsy, you know, as you win, you become more popular nationally, but the state of Virginia, the state of North Carolina, the state of South Carolina, people would come from all three states to um, see the games and to uh, support the team. You know, those national names allow people to become fans, and we had a lot of those fans all over the world. I saw my jersey, Larry Muggsy. We had a mural downtown of ourselves uh, in downtown Charlotte. You know, so the town was a buzz. It really was. It truly was. It was. They were excited about Hornets basketball, you know, and it just made me proud to be a part of that and to contribute to the excitement um, in Charlotte during that time. Realized the Hornets gear and, and the colors uh, were phenomenal early in the in our uh, careers. When we go out on the road and we'd see people uh, with the teal teal on teal uh, our uniform, our hat. We knew that was a popular color, uh, color uh, and the kids really loved it. You go to you know Seattle, or you'd go to one of these places, and you'd see our uniforms. You know, you'd see Muggsy Bogues, uh, you know, uniforms in the stands because you know people wanted to wear that teal. Everywhere we went in the country, whether it was L.A., Phoenix, Portland, people loved the color of our uniform, the teal and purple, uh, and they couldn't get enough of it. I think that we were like up there like num number one or two or three in sales um, for a long time. Realization was sunk in when one year we were the number one pirated logo in the world above Gucci and all the other top name brands. People were ripping off our logo left and right. But to see it on other athletes, to see it on celebrities, I was surprised, but it was original. And it just became, here's this new team uh, on a way up. And uh, man, they got some cool stuff. So let's, let's get in on that. People have already been in on the Celtics and the Knicks and of course the Lakers and the Bulls. But that's, let's, let's be different here. Well, we loved it being in the mainstream with the colors and the uniform. Uh, 
You know, it made us, you know, play a little harder for just, not just for our fans here in Charlotte, but uh, the people wearing our gear out on the road. Uh, and we knew that, hey, if, if they're wearing our stuff, they're paying attention to us. Even though, we're, you know, we're not winning a lot of games, but they're watching to see what happens. For some reason, it just caught on, and, you know, people were wearing Hornets gear everywhere. Uh, you know, not only in Charlotte, but, you know, to see that as we travel the country and going to visiting arenas as a new organization and to see people, you know, with the colors and, and with the jersey, that was pretty cool. Once we got Larry, it became, we became a traveling pop star group. Larry, by nature, um, was good with people. And, and funny as hell. And so there was an authenticity about Larry. You know, the fact that he didn't take himself too seriously when Converse wanted to, you know, dress him up as a little old lady. I, I love the fact that this incredibly, you know, rugged, you know, I mean, he was built like, you know, 50s linebacker. I have a handful of guys that I, I would call one of my best teammates, and LJ's in that, that group, definitely. So he told us everything that was happening. He actually ran across, what do y'all think of this before? We were like, yeah, go for it, man. That's, that's, that'd be cool stuff. Once we found out the campaign and what he was working with, uh, you know, Al, Al, he was secure. He, you know, you ain't finding too many males putting on a dress, especially, you know, in the game of basketball. But he was more secure with himself. He don't have no problem making fun of himself. And LJ was a type of tough player. We knew the grandmama wasn't going to phase how the opponents looked at him or how he played. One of the toughest guys I've, I've, uh, I've been able to play with. Um, and we knew he was charis charismatic. He was a happy-go-lucky guy. We knew he would carry that role well. Let's go. LJ was always smooth. Tell you, he was one of my favorite guys to watch in high school. Uh, he's a good looking dude, solid, golden glove boxer, really, really tough in them streets. You know, he wasn't one to just to talk. And he was just a smooth guy. So when he did Grand Mama, it was, it, I thought it was a beautiful campaign. And we were out, uh, you know, we came out in the same time. So he taught me a lot, all the way from high school. He had this very large personality. The the one commercial he threw away was, uh, he was born, he was like a baby in a manger. And uh, Magic Johnson said, yeah, well, his last name will be Johnson. And Larry Bird said, okay, well then his first name is Larry. Um, I, I, I kind of like that too. But he just worked, you know, he was just a flashy player. He's only six, five and a half. But uh, he played big, he could jump, he could move, he was powerful and he backed down from nobody. And I think if you took that personality and infused that, that that advertising campaign was just a real meat mix. Watch out. There's a new granny in town. 